A frantic search this morning for an American and two Australians who vanished in Mexico nearly a week ago at this point. Loved ones say the three men never even checked into the Airbnb that they had booked together. Kelsey Kernstein is here with more. Kelsey, what do we know about the search for these three missing men? That's crazy. Well, people, Lisa, we can tell you is this is now an international effort. It now involves the FBI and the Australian Consulate's office. This morning, we can also tell you that there are some details that have been circulating on social media. They've now started to be cooperated by police. And so what we know that these men, they were driving a white Chevrolet pickup truck. Police say that they have found the truck. They've also found the tents along the beach where these men were last seen. But this morning, there is still no trace of the U.S. citizen Jack Carter Road and Australian brothers Caleb and Jake Robinson. Relatives say that this Saturday marks one week since they last heard from the three. But they were not officially reported missing until this past Monday after they never arrived at their Airbnb and Caleb Robinson didn't show up for work as scheduled. Baja California's chief prosecutor told reporters, quote, we do not know what condition they are in, adding, quote, all lines of investigation are open at this time. We cannot rule anything out until we find them. That's crazy, ladies and gentlemen. That's so crazy. Welcome back to Monarch Smart TV. And if this is your first time here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for your boy and turn them notification bell and put them on all so you do not miss a content because we got the facts, the bangers, the truth that we bring to you on a daily basis. So get your chips, get your popcorn, get your spliff, get whatever you need to relax and get comfy and check out the facts. Breaking news, authorities in Mexico say three missing surfers, including an American, have been found dead. The trio disappeared. Ah, oh, man, that's crazy, that's crazy, that's crazy, that's crazy. You hear, you hear, they found them now. Ah, oh, man, and they ain't even make it. Uh, what happened? Last weekend during a surfing trip, KTLA's Gene King is in the newsroom with the latest. Good morning, Gene. Good morning, Eric. Well, Baja California's Attorney General Office uh, confirms the bodies found are those of the missing surfers. The victims are a resident from Southern California and two Australian brothers. Authorities have also arrested three people in their disappearance. Okay, so three people get arrested. I hope they got the right persons. So two australian and one american wow and they went where let's find out here are pictures of the three men the mother of the missing australians posted on social media asking for the public's help to find her sons jake and callum she says april 27th is the last time that she heard from them and one of them is diabetic mm. she says the american with them is jack carter road but the okay. u.s embassy has still not confirmed that information yet then there's this new images of a burned out chevrolet pickup truck that mexican police say belonged to the missing service first wow so why is they truck is like that this got this seems like it's some cartel work remind you they find their bodies they dead and look at their truck they truck is abandoned burned out ah oh, man how it got torched though is still a mystery this morning and this video shows Mexican authorities frisking people by an SUV we're told they may be connected to this investigation that's what's up you see it you see it you see it Mexican they doing their job police arrested a woman and two men they had a mobile phone that belonged to one of the brothers along with meth those surfer whoa 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 let's pause that you heard that they have one of the phones that belongs to one of the, the victim, one of the brothers. How they have that person's phone that died? Oh, they got them. They got them. They got to have something to do. They can't tell me, oh, somebody sold me this phone. Nah, bro. Surfers went missing over the weekend, and detectives say they found the surfers' tents along a beach with blood on them. They were believed to be camping along the Baja coast near the city of Ensenada, but didn't show up to their Airbnb. The state prosecutor says drug cartels are active in the area and they're not ruling anything out. A Mexican journalist has been following this case and says it's a dangerous area. Ah, oh, man, that's crazy. See, folks, you see what's going on, right? You can't, you gotta be careful when you visit countries like these, like, I don't want to tell nobody like don't go to Mexico and stuff of that nature but yo kids 
any you could get you could get killed in any country there is not a safe country in this world but case violence happen everywhere it's crazy people everywhere it's guns everywhere knives machete people could use anything to get rid of you but certain countries is definitely way more violent and dangerous than some especially mexico where you know they have cartels and you know what the cartels is about they about kidnapping they want that money if you don't worth anything to them if they can't get in touch with none of your family member anybody your loved ones that want you alive they might just kill you because they're not gonna let you go and let you go report it to the police you feel me that's crazy ladies and gentlemen so mexico is a place you have to be careful of going especially these areas where cartels might be at once you look like you don't belong here they might get you Tres turistas hayan desaparecido y que de que no los encuentren y que todo apunta que pudiera ser una She says in Spanish, the surfer's pickup truck was found in a remote area by the beach and that Ensenada depends on tourism dollars. Unfortunately, it's also a high crime area. As we know, nine years ago, two Australian surfers were killed in the Sea of Cortez. They oh, were victims man. of highway bandits. Three people were arrested in that case. Now, the state prosecutor says she's in contact very closely with the U.S. Ah, oh, man, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You hear that? That same area. People got killed there already by cartels. So it's a danger zone. These brothers risk their lives by going there. And how... And, that's in another country so that's why they probably ain't even got no weapons because i don't think you could, if you got licensed guns or stuff of that nature i don't think you could take it with you in another country i don't know how that work but you got to be careful when you enter in other countries especially countries that got whole bunch of gangs and cartels and stuff of that nature you got to be you got to be safe you got to travel with people that knows places you are ready, you are ready, you are ready. So make sure you are safe out there, ladies and gentlemen. And let's move on to the next story. Our next story, ladies and gentlemen, it's about a former councilman charged with murdering a young female that he had some type of relationship with. So let's let's check it out and find out what exactly what happened. Parents say that McNeil met their much younger daughter in a strip club. They say that McNeil wooed their child with lavish gifts and fancy dates, but he was controlling. And when he didn't get his way, he threw temper tantrums. Rifles at the ready, searching under tarps. Seattle SWAT team, miles away from their own city, move with guns drawn in a quiet Bothell neighborhood as they clear the home of former Bothell council member, 58-year-old James McNeil. McNeil is accused of murdering 21-year-old Lilia Guyveronsky. I was totally shocked. Totally shocked. I wow, he's 50-something and she's 20? Well, both an adult. And you know how it is nowadays. Once dude got bread and female, they like that security stuff. You know what I'm saying? Where they could get whatever they want. But once, once she... You know what I'm saying probably find somebody else or not getting what she usually want that you know what I'm saying what she usually get you know what I'm saying stuff could go sour cuz especially if they don't live together and she probably got other dudes on the side you know how that shit work I mean uh, the James McNeil that I know cared a great deal about the citizens and the kids and the community. Tom Agnew served on Bothell City Council with McNeil. He tells Fox 13 News he was also close to McNeil's family. What the, you know, what happened? What happened? New court documents I obtained answer that question more clearly. Guy Veronsky's parents say the young daughter met McNeil, a man more than twice her age, in a strip club. They say McNeil dazzled their daughter with dates, parties, and fancy clothes, and even st So, she's a stripper. She dances. She's about that bread. You know how it goes. So she met a sugar daddy. And 
dude probably don't even want her to dance no you know how it goes i'll take care of you you ain't got to do none of that blah 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 but usually the female she just she 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 gonna willing to do that okay she want that bread but in her mind she's still gonna be doing what she do you know what i'm saying started paying her bills but the charging documents say mcneil was controlling and emotionally unstable a note found in guy Veronsky's home she said he was controlling on un unstable you know how it is girl if i'm taking care of you this this how most men think if i'm taking care of you giving you everything you need paying your bills you you're not in need of nothing they feel like they have the obligation to, you know what I'm saying, the rights to you. Where, you know what I'm saying, I'm paying your bills, I'm doing everything for you. So, you're supposed to respect me, you're supposed to do these things for me, you ain't supposed to cheat on me, you ain't supposed to be talking to nobody else. You know how that goes. Home states, McNeil did not support her when she needed it, and only wanted sex and complete access to her life. Guy <laughs> Yo, you, they crazy, they crazy. They saying my man wasn't a supporter of her life when she most needed it. He only wanted sex and control of her life. That don't make no sense. Because if he wants sex and control of her life, that means anything she need, he going to take care of that. And that's what y'all started off with, that he was buying her a gift. And that's what the mother said. You know what I'm saying? She's... He spoiled her, his daughter by her daughter by buying buying her everything she needed, paying her bills, everything. So how he's not supporting her when she needed the most, when he's the one doing everything for her. What she had some type of mental issue type of stuff that was going on that he wasn't supporting. I don't know. Everonsky's parents say their daughter broke things off with McNeil on April 27th which creates a tragic timeline. Two days later, police believe Guy Veronsky wrote a letter to herself, which says, do not interact with James today. Police also believe on this same day. On that day, she wrote a letter saying, she's not being interacted with James today. That's, I don't know what that mean. That mean, it's like a diary, right? And she just putting in her diary saying, she ain't messing with him today. McNeil, a six foot two, 300 plus pound man, strangled the five foot four, 120 pound woman in her own home, then left her naked in her bed, wrapped in a blanket, cut his own wrists, and called his attorney to notify police of the homicide. McNeil has mm. not shown up to any of his court hearings. There is one scheduled in the next few weeks that he. I don't know what's going on with that situation right there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I don't know. That's that's serious right there. Cut cut his own risk. Call his attorney. They they said he strangled her. Mmm. It's a lot of stuff going on there, but we gonna let the law take care of that. You, like I said whole bunch of crazies in this world and you know how it goes when a man spend all that type of bread on a young female and then she decided to you know what i'm saying neglect him or try to break it off after he done spend mad bread you know some people can't handle that type of stuff but like you don't own people it doesn't matter how much money you give somebody you still don't own them you feel me so it is what it is let's move on to the next story an award-winning Atlanta music producer dies in a shooting. Police say his son was the shooter. Our Fox 5's Denise. What? A producer in Atlanta. So he's a he's a Atlanta Atlanta, Atlanta music producer. I wonder who who that guy is. I probably know him. And his own son took his life. That's crazy. That's crazy. Let's find out what happened. Denise Dillon has more details on this story. And Denise, you found out more about the producer known as D-Bills. D-Bills? Yeah, I talked to a couple uh, of people who knew him really well. And they say this is real. That's crazy. I know him. I, I, not personally, but I heard of him. He works with, he works with a lot of um, famous um, rappers and stuff of that nature. Let's, let's find out. 
really a double tragedy. They lost their friend and their friend's son, who they all knew, is now in jail charged with the shooting. He was a two-time now platinum producer. Billy has worked with a lot of... You hear that? He a two-time platinum producer. Let's find out who he works with. Atlanta artists, Lil Baby, mm. Life and Lucy, mm. a lot of people. Um, you hear that? You hear that? He a, So he a big time, big time producer and got killed by his own son? Wow. He's, he's, he's made his mark in the city. Cal Austin worked alongside D. Bills, whose real name is Clinton Dorsey in the music industry. Austin says in addition to his contributions to the music scene, his friend also had a thriving dog breeding business. Dorsey Counts, so he bred French, French Bulldogs, Frenchies, so um, that was something that was very lucrative for him. He had a big love and passion for it, um, as, just as much as the music. Dorsey owned that business with his son, 23-year-old Ed Dorsey. Austin says the father and son he owns the business with his son so he put his son d on almost everything he taking care of him remind you that dad is a platinum producer so most likely he got some type of bread and he started a a, a, a dog business with his son had been visiting him at his apartment Thursday. Austin says he had stepped out for a moment, and that's when the Dorseys got into an argument. Brookhaven police say Ed Dorsey had a gun. The argument turned to being physical, and the physical confrontation turned to Mr. Dorsey retrieving a firearm and shooting, shooting Clinton Dorsey. Ed Dorsey is now in the DeKalb County Jail charged with voluntary manslaughter. Austin says this hurts in more ways than one because he's close to both the father and the son. It was a situation that went too far, but again, that was something that was probably deeply rooted from their relationship as father and son. Honestly, rest in peace, my good brother. I love you.